newsletters are one of the most effective ways to stay top of mind with clients and prospects. Yet, if you've ever toyed with the idea of launching a newsletter, you may have put it on hold once you realize all the steps required to launch one and then the potential stress of having to publish content on a regular basis. Believe me, I get it, okay? But here's the thing. The secret to launching a newsletter and publishing consistently is to have a process you can follow month after month. My friend and colleague, Michael Katz, is a real pro at newsletter marketing. He's been doing it for over 15 years. And today, I'm going to share with you the newsletter launch process that Michael recommends for freelance writers. And the first step is a very important one, and that is to commit. An email newsletter is a relationship building tool, and building relationships takes time. So commit to publishing your newsletter for at least one year. That is so important. Don't go in it halfway. Go in it full bore. To hold yourself to this commitment, it can be helpful to sign a contract with yourself. You know, Just write down your newsletter launch date, the frequency of publication that you're committing to, and the duration of the commitment. And just specify how you reward yourself when you meet this commitment. And then sign it and post it on your office wall or bulletin board as a reminder. That can be a very, very powerful first step. Step two, make note of the questions prospects and clients tend to ask you. And if you think about it, I bet you get the same 10 to 15 questions from prospects and clients as you're having conversations with people. And these questions are a great place to start when planning your content. So make a list of, let's just say, about 15, 20 frequently asked questions just to start with. And jot down a few bullets that describe your answer below each of those questions. You can create a list on, on, on a notebook, in your office, whiteboard, a Word document, an Evernote, sticky notes, voice memos, whatever works best for you. Just keep them somewhere. Now, you don't have to explore these questions in depth at first. It's much better to give your audience a nugget or two in each issue than try to cover the entire topic at length. Step number three would be to write three starter articles based on three of those questions. Now, your article in your newsletter doesn't have to be long. Again, all things being equal, you're just trying to, to give some basic information. Shorter is better. Write just what you need to give your readers something they'll want to read. Michael's standard approach is to start the newsletter with a greeting just to make a human connection. Then he follows that with a story-based article that delivers some sort of insight. You know, the fact is that newsletters with multiple articles and sidebars and nuggets and, and tips can be daunting to produce and read. So generally speaking, shorter and simpler is going to be better. Step number four, research and decide on an email service provider. So you're going to need to engage the services of an email service provider such as ConvertKit, Constant Contact, or MailChimp. Email service providers give you the following benefits. First, customizable templates. And these templates won't turn you into a great designer, but they're good enough to at least get you started. Most vendors have dozens of these templates to choose from. The second thing they're going to give you is list management. So it's just going to be an automated proven way to add new subscribers and manage unsubscribe requests, you, that's not something you can manage yourself. And list provider or email service provider is going to have that functionality built into the system. The third thing is going to be data and reports. You're going to be able to get information about your mailing, such as number of opens, clicks, who clicked, uh, all, those, all those stats that could really give you insights into how your newsletter is being received. And finally, compliance report. Now, while not foolproof, these email service providers can help make sure that you're compliant with standard regulations when it comes to email marketing. Most email service providers are fairly inexpensive to use, and MailChimp, by the way, is free for up to 2,000 subscribers. So that's definitely one to check out. Step number five is to set up your newsletter template and opt-in box. Designing your own template or modifying an existing one can look amateurish if it doesn't match the colors or design of your website. So sometimes it's worth investing in having a designer create custom design for you. But if having a professionally designed template is going to hold you back, then just pick the best ready-made template from your email service provider. You can always improve it later. So just 
think ready, fire, aim. You know, you don't have to have everything perfect uh, to, to launch. You can improve as you go. Your email service provider is also going to give you the code you'll need to drop into your website to create an opt-in or subscription form. If you're not sure how to do this, just look for a video tutorial on the topic. Most of these providers will include detailed tutorials on every aspect of setting up your newsletter infrastructure. Step number six, ask personal and professional contacts if you can subscribe them to your newsletter. You can't just add people to your list at random. You need to have a relationship with them. And even when you have an existing relationship, it's always a good practice to get their permission to add their email to your mailing list. Some jurisdictions have restrictions on whom you can send commercial emails to. So just make sure you're compliant with local rules and regulations. Step number seven, publish your first issue. So once you have everything ready, it's time to hit that publish button. And I got two quick tips for you about this. First, you'll never feel 100% ready to publish. Putting your work out there can feel scary, but at some point you just have to ship. You have to get going. Second, Include a quick note at the top of your newsletter reminding your readers that they're on your list because you have a relationship with them. And then provide an easy means to unsubscribe so they can unsubscribe and just let them know, you know how they can do that. Now, some will unsubscribe when they receive that first newsletter, and that's okay. You know, Don't take it personally. In fact, over time, you'll see people unsubscribing. It's very, very normal and expected for subscriber list to naturally decay over time. A certain percentage of people will unsubscribe. So you have to keep adding new subscribers. And the important thing here is not to take it personally. When you meet people, though, ask if you can put them on your list and briefly explain the benefits, briefly explain what they can expect. Remember, it's not a numbers game. You know, this is you're not necessarily playing a, a numbers game and, and trying to be an information marketer where you're just trying to just build your list and it's all about the size of your list. It's really about list quality. You want people who care about you and about your content. Eventually, you might want to add other elements that will help you grow your list, such as a lead magnet. Step number eight, upload the newsletter article to your blog. So a few weeks after publishing a newsletter article, you want to upload the same article to your blog if you have one. And if you don't have one, this is a great excuse to start one because you don't need new content. You could just recycle, reuse what you've already published and just post it on a blog. Having the content on your blog as well as in your newsletter is a very good practice because people can see what you've written before. And Google likes the content updates because it's a sign that your website is not static, that you're continually updating it. Step number nine. Promote the article, once it's on your blog, on social media. That way you get more eyeballs on your content by sharing links to it on social media platforms such as LinkedIn, Twitter, and Facebook. Step number 10, published on LinkedIn Publisher. LinkedIn Publisher gives you yet another platform for publishing your content and getting it in front of more people who wouldn't have seen it otherwise. But my suggestion here is wait at least about two weeks to publish on LinkedIn after you've put that content on your blog, just to make sure that Google indexes the article first uh, on your website, that they look at that and they publish that index at first while it's on your website and second on LinkedIn. Step number 11, find other uses for the article. So repurpose the same content into other formats and uses, such as a guest post for another site, a presentation, a talk, or a video. You can also turn a series of related articles into a short ebook, for example. Ultimately, your goal is to write once and publish many times. Use your newsletter as the base for a broader content marketing effort. Your newsletter now becomes kind of the starting point, and from there, you can really expand, reuse, recycle, repurpose. Step number 12, write another article. You always want to stay two or three articles ahead of your publication. So once you've published your newsletter, go back to your growing list of article ideas and select another topic to write about. Get on that habit. And step 13, repeat this process every month. If you want to be viewed as an expert, you have to create content. So you have to start and then you have to repeat the process. Look, you may not do it perfectly at the beginning. That's okay. You'll improve as you go. The important things are to commit and to get started. 
To learn more about Michael Katz, visit his website at michaelkatz.com and sign up for his excellent newsletter. This has been Ed Gandia with High Income Business Writing. To get more tips and strategies on how to earn more in less time doing work you love for better clients, visit b2blauncher.com.